Hello, everyone. My name is Miranda Kennedy, and I'm the director of the ABLE National Resource Center, and I'm very happy to be here with all of you today. Thank you for joining us for our May Mental Health Awareness Month and the Power of ABLE Accounts panel discussion. It's not really a webinar today. It, it's a panel discussion we're having. We're going to go through some information first, but we're really looking forward to getting to the panel discussion. Before we start that, um, I'd like to share that the ABLE National Resource Center, we are funded through a grant by Prudential, and we have an hour time here with all of you today. Before we get started and go through some of our initial laying the groundwork uh, piece, we're going to hand things over to my colleague, our project coordinator, Hope Price, who has just some logistics around the presentation, the panel today and how to engage so with that, I'll hand it over to you, Hope, to talk to people about how they can listen to the discussion today. Thank you, Miranda. And while I'm doing this, can you please promote the captioner to on, hover over the more button and assign her to closed captioning, please? So for listening to the webinar, the audio for today's meeting can be accessed using computer auto audio or by calling in by phone. If you select computer audio, please make sure your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. If you do not have sound capabilities <clears throat> on your computer or prefer to listen by phone, please dial 1-929-205-6050. And enter webinar code 853-5373-8344. Next slide, please. For captioning, real-time captioning is provided during this webinar. The captions can be found by clicking on the closed captions icon in your Zoom's control. Um, Zoom controls at the bottom of the screen. Captions are also available in the stream text link at streamtext.net forward slash player question mark event equals sign NDI hyphen IRS. If you do not see the captions after clicking the button, please alert the host via the chat box. Next slide, please. Questions and technical issues. If you have questions, please use the Q&A box to submit any questions. We will try to answer all questions during the webinar. If your question is not answered or if you are listening by phone and not logged in, please visit ablenrc.org. For technical issues, if you have technical difficulties, please use the chat box to send a message to the NDI host or email hprice at NDI dash inc.org. Next slide, please. If you missed portions of this webinar, it is being recorded and the materials will be placed on the ABLE National Resource Center website within one to two weeks, along with all of our other ABLE webinars at ablenrc.org forward slash resources forward slash webinars. Thank you, Miranda. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hope. Now I just want to go through just a little bit of information for those of you who may potentially be joining us for the first time. We have just a couple of minutes of, you know, sharing some information about who we are and what we're doing, and then we're going to get to our panel discussion, which is really what we're all here for today. But um, for those of you who don't know, the ABLE National Resource Center, our ABLE NRC, is the leading comprehensive source of objective independent information about federal and state related ABLE programs and activities, including guidance on tax advantaged ABLE savings accounts. It really is our mission to educate, promote, and support the positive impact that ABLE can make on the lives of millions of Americans with disabilities and their families. It is important to note that we do not oversee or run any of the ABLE programs. We really are here as an education uh, and resource center. Uh, we share best practices, strategies, stories of ABLE account owners and their families. You're gonna hear some of those today um, and, and lots of good answers and guidance and information. We've got lots of great tools that people can use. Uh, and we're gonna be sharing some of those today. Um, in addition to talking about some of the stories and how people are actually using ABLE accounts in their lives. So with that, oh, there's a picture of me, although you can hopefully also see me on your screen in, in the panel video boxes. 
there. Um, again, my name is Miranda Kennedy. I'm the director of the ABLE National Resource Center. It, our parent organization is National Disability Institute, which is the only national nonprofit focused exclusively on increasing the financial capability and well being of people with disabilities. We will be hearing today from three of our ABLE ambassadors. Um, We'll be hearing from Teresa Price, who's an ABLE ambassador and parent of an ABLE account owner, as well as her son, Logan, who will be joining us today. We'll also be hearing from Sarah Perez and Hector Ramirez. And they're gonna tell you a little bit about who they are, where they are in the country, um, what their goals are with their ABLE accounts and their story, as well as some advice they have. So I'm gonna let them do that. Uh, but before we do that, let me just tell you a little bit about what we're covering today during our hour together. We're going to do a real quick ABLE Accounts 101. What's an ABLE account? Who's eligible? Who can open an account? And what can ABLE funds be used for? We're just going to touch on that as well as share some resources where you can find more of that answers and go deeper with those questions, but just to get us all on the same page. And then we're going to be hearing from Sarah, Logan, Teresa, and Hector. Um, to share their stories as well as engage in a discussion and you can submit questions for them as well. We do have some questions here to start off with, but we will also certainly entertain yours as well. I'd like to also say that uh, my colleagues, ABLE subject matter experts, Marlene Uliski and Lori Schaller are joining us and may be answering some of the questions you have if they're very technical in nature uh, on, the, on the chat and the Q&A as we're going. We'll then get to the questions and answers, like I said, and then we'll wrap up with just a couple of ABLE and RC resources in just the last couple of minutes. So what is an ABLE account? Some of you may know this and some of you who are new may not, but it, the ABLE Act that was passed in 2004, 14, um, that stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience. Um, that ABLE Act legislation that was very bar bipartisan um, it allows states to create an ABLE account for people with a disability that began before age 26 in order for them to be able to save and invest money in a tax exempt account, a 529A account, and to be able to use those funds in the ABLE account for qualified disability expenses, which is very broad, um, as well as the funds in those ABLE accounts can help individuals maintain eligibility for federally funded public benefits uh, that are means tested. And as part of that, um, there, there's for federally funded means tested benefits, there's an asset limit of $2,000. And that $2,000 amount hasn't changed since 1984. So that, that's a real limitation on the ability to save and, and develop assets. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But so, a little bit more about who is eligible. The ABLE account, that tax advantage savings account, it's an investment account that's owned by the person with a disability who has a social security number or a tax filing ID and where they have a disability or blindness with the onset of disability beginning before the age of 26 under current legislation or and where they receive supplemental security income, SSI and or Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI benefits, or it could be where they self-certify that they have a written and signed disability certification from a qualifying physician. And we actually have, have an example of a disability certification form available on our website in case that's something you wanna check out um, and might need to use. So who can open the account? So the IRS finalized their regulations just this past November of 2020. Um, and who can open an account? This goes through priority order. First, it would be that eligible individual who has the legal capacity to do so. Um, or it could be where that individual has selected, has been someone who has been selected by the eligible individual to open the account on their behalf. That would be the next person after the eligible individual with the legal capacity who could open the account. After that would be the individual's agent under a power of attorney, a conservator, or a legal guardian. Next would be a spouse, a parent, a sibling, or a grandparent who could open that ABLE account. Keeping in mind only one ABLE account can be opened for that eligible individual. 
And finally, for Social Security Administration, where, that where there's a representative payee, either at an individual or organizational level, would be the final person who could open an ABLE account on behalf of the eligible individual. So what are qualified disability expenses? There's broad categories um, of expenses that can be included. And a qualified disability expense or a QDE, it's any expense that's related to the out account owner um, that would result in them helping to live a life that's, that's more independent, that would improve their health or help them maintain their health really in achieving that better life experience or increasing their quality of life. And it's very broad. It, it definitely has to positively impact that individual, but it can also benefit others as well. It doesn't have to be just restricted to that individual, although it has to benefit them. Um, again, the categories are very broad. Examples are categories such as education, housing, food, transportation, healthcare, legal expenses, funeral expenses. Um, there's a wide number of categories there and, and examples would include, well, one thing I do want to make sure you know is that it's not meant to replace any other services or supports that are provided through other programs someone might be eligible for. It really is meant to augment. So just one quick example would be in terms of supporting employment. Uh, if someone's getting job coaching or counseling, but maybe they would benefit from more that's provided by their service provider, an ABLE account could pay for more of that. That would be an example. So ABLE accounts can really augment existing services and supports. It's not meant to replace. And as long as withdrawals from your ABLE account are spent on qualified disability expenses, and we've got all kinds of frequently asked questions and answers on our website about QDEs, but as long as those withdrawals from the ABLE account are spent on qualified disability expenses, the ABLE account growth is tax-free, and that's pretty significant. Um, and there's a potential value there that's not something people with disabilities who've been able to save or invest have been able to experience before at this level. Finally, I want to show you our comprehensive website at ablenrc.org, where you can find a lot of that information and go deeper on those topics. Uh, there's roadmaps on our website, how to enroll, the five steps, what is ABLE, who's eligible, how can funds be used, how do I open an account, how do I manage my account. Um, it will lead you to helping to open, decide which program you might want to open an account with, if that's a good vehicle for you. And once you have an ABLE account, we have the roadmap to independence, and the link is here as well. And this is on our website. Uh, how to set those financial goals, build a circle of support who can help you in building your ABLE account, who can contribute to your ABLE account, how to make those smart financial decisions, monitor the account, and really celebrate being ABLE. So with that, I think I have done enough talking, and I'm ready to ask some, ask some questions of our panelists who I've had the pleasure of working with over a number of years, and I've really appreciated the role they've played in giving feedback to the ABLE National Resource Center as we've developed materials and tools. You know, many of them have been on presentations we've given. We've shared their story in lots of different forms. And, and those stories have continued to evolve over the years. Um, and we're ready to hear from them. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and I think stop sharing the PowerPoint, right, Hope? And I'm just gonna open up and open up. There we go. We can see our faces. Okay, this is great. Everybody there? Hi. Hi there. Hi there. I think in the upper upper left hand corner with the beautiful colorful hair is Sarah Perez. Uh, above my screen on my screen, I see Teresa and her son Logan. And then we also see um, our ambassador Hector uh, over to it's my left, it might be everyone else's right. But hi everyone, I'm hoping you're having a great day. I'm glad you're here, thank you for being here. We have a few questions we wanna go through and, and we're hoping to keep this pretty conversational. We've had some great chats amongst ourselves. Um, but I'd like to start off with giving each of you an opportunity to introduce yourselves and, and tell us a little bit about yourselves. So I think I'll actually go ahead and, and if it's okay, start with Sarah. Sarah, hi, can you tell everyone hi. about yourself? <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm doing good, how are you? 
Good. Happy to be here. <laughs> Me too. Well, my name is Sarah Perez and I'm 38 and I live in Jackson, Michigan. It's in Southern Michigan. It's the seat of the county. So it's a fairly sizable city for Southern Michigan. Um, I I'm an artist and I spend my time volunteering at a local um, art and history museum. I have been, uh, I've had an ABLE account since 2016. Um, I'm eligible because I have a psychiatric disorder, um, bipolar disorder one, and um, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> You're on mute, Miranda. You're on mute. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Hope, for letting me know I was on mute. <laughs> um, we'll shoot it over across the country to the great state of Maine to hear from Teresa and Logan. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Logan. Can you? Hi there. Hi. My name is Logan Price, and I am 28 years old. I live in Saco, Maine. It's a small town, but it's a very nice town. I like to play guitar. I like to read. I like to go for walks. I like to me with my support team and I like to uh, enjoy life as much as possible with my mental illness condition of schizophrenia. It's great to have you here Logan and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and also introduce your mom Teresa. Yes I'm known as Logan's mom uh, so yeah my name is Teresa Price I'm 59 and we live about 30 miles north of, of Logan in a just a small kind of bedroom community of Portland Maine we're in North Yarmouth Maine and um, I've also got two younger children. And so all three of my kids have been diagnosed with some kind of mental disorder, ranging from you know, severe, in Logan's case, to fairly mild. Um, so I've just been on this journey for about 10 years. And, uh, and I'm very involved with NAMI Maine, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So I go around the state lecturing for them. I'm also a structural engineer. My husband and I own our own firm that we run out of our house. We've been doing that for about 22 years. So it's a full life, but I am blessed. And I have to say, Logan is just a wonderful young man. And uh, I'm very blessed to have him in my life. And uh, we're, it's a real pleasure to be able to tell you guys about the ABLE accounts because they've meant a lot for Logan and our family. And we'll be hearing a lot more about that. Thank you, Teresa and Logan, for being here. And, and Hector, can you go ahead and tell the folks who've joined us here today a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you. Yes, hi, definitely. Uh, well, yes, hi, Miranda, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Hector Manuel Ramirez. Uh, my pronouns are, are he, they, them. Let me give you a quick visual description of my background for those people. Uh, so I'm in, actually sitting in my living in my bedroom with a blurred background. Um, I am wearing a black shirt with a logo that says, We Rise Above Racism, and this is our mental health campaign here in Los Angeles County. I am wearing a Native American Seminole beaded uh, Nick, uh, and uh, I, uh, I am Chicago Apache in Mexican. Uh, I am uh, autistic, and I have a psychiatric disability of uh, uh, bipolar disorder one too. Um, I have hearing. I have. Uh, I'm hard of hearing, so I wear hearing aids, and uh, I use card and sign language. And I'm somebody who is formerly uh, homeless, uh, formerly institutionalized person. Um, I live here with my family in a beautiful Yanga Tongba. And many of you might know it as Los Angeles, California. And these are the ancestral lands of the Ferda de New Band of Mission Indians. And this is where I have my home. I'm a disability rights advocate uh, nationally. So I serve on the board of directors for Disability Rights California and the National Disability Rights Network in Washington, DC. Um, and when I'm not doing any of that, I co-parent with my sister, with my one-year-old niece and my two-year-old uh, nephew. Uh, so that's a lot of work. Uh, and I love gardening and singing with them. And uh, so I'm really, really glad to be here to share my able story with everybody. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for introducing yourselves. I, I, I've known you well enough. I was like, I could introduce you, but I'd rather have you introduce yourselves. And I thought that was great. Thank you everyone for letting our audience know who you are, a little bit about you, and they're gonna hear more because uh, the, the next set of questions that I have um, and I'll start, I'll just keep going doing the round robin and, and we can engage too, because I know these folks have gotten to know each other as well and they'll build off each other's stories. So we're, we're hoping to keep it a little informal. But um, the first question I'm gonna shoot back to Sarah, make sure you're unmuted, Sarah. I know I left myself on mute there for a minute. 
but could you tell Sarah, the, the group who's here with us today, what your life and what your financial situation was like before you opened your ABLE account? Before I opened my ABLE account, I, uh, it, it was pretty rocky. I was, <laughs> I was diagnosed um, at 21 with a bipolar disorder and um, went on to disability very shortly after that. Um, I was on SSI at first and I didn't get a lot of money because I lived with my parents. So I never had money for extra things in life that I needed or wanted. And it was very frustrating. It felt very much like in some respects, I was being punished for being ill because I couldn't have things because it might take away my other benefits that I had. So it's one of those things like, it was hard for a young 20 something year old to realize they can't do the things that their peers can because of life. Well, and can you tell everyone, you know, what it's been like, you know, now that you have opened your ABLE account, what's changed? Because that's, that's pretty powerful, what you had to say about before your ABLE account. What mm -hmm. role has an ABLE account played in where you're at now? And where are you at now? Like literally, physically, where you're at now is one of the hints. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm physically sitting in a home that my parents um, helped buy for me and um, it's I'm able to save for things I was able to save for a computer a laptop that I'm on right now and um, a printer because in my when I I do photography and I need to edit photos so you got to use photoshop for that so I was able to do that and um, I've also been able to pay off a lot of medical bills because uh, there were times in my life before where I would lose um, Medicaid for a while or Medicare. And so I had, I accrued some medical bills. So like that it's, it's, it's a relief to know that there is a way to save money for the things that I need in this for myself. And I know we'll be, be speaking more about that with you as well, but, but thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Sarah. And, and we'll go over to, let's head back east, east, northeast to Teresa and Logan and and check in with both of you, you know, the same question. Can you tell us a little bit about what your life and financial situation was like before you opened your ABLE account? Sure. I'm Logan and uh, my life was a little bit difficult with no ABLE account because I couldn't save money when I wanted to. And I wanted, I, I actually had uh, SSI, but uh, I wanted to, I really wanted a, a chance to save that money and now it goes somewhere as opposed to just being spent on rent and things like that every single month and being drained away every month. I just didn't have any place to put it. And I, I wasn't wealthy or anything, but uh, I was looking for a place to save my money. And the April account was the perfect, perfect opportunity to start to that. Uh, my mental health improved when I gained the, when I gained the mental when I gained the, the able accounts, and it's because I was able to save my money in a place that would uh, secure it, and it was fantastic that I was able to improve mentally because I knew that I was secure financially, and I like that a lot. It can be interconnected for sure, and Teresa, I know is is you know Logan's mom. You also have a different perspective um, in terms of being a important member of his circle of support uh, and supporting the ABLE account there. And, and yeah. you learned about it, right? Yeah, I think, you know, when this journey started, I knew nothing about mental illnesses or anything. And, and there was no help. And this is back in 2010, 2011. And even paying for Logan's hospital bills, which, you know, it's like $1,000 a day and they could be lengthy stays. It was very stressful. So I finally figured out how to get him on Medicaid and SSI, but, you know, but all that was so stressful. And then to find out that he could only have $2,000, I'm like, what if something happens to us? Um, so it was really stressful and it was, it was just really a challenge. I, I just worried about him all the time. So, you know, so it, it definitely affected my mental health. I, you know, I just, it was not good. Um, so, and then I would say afterwards and finding out about ABLE accounts and getting him set up, it was just such a relief to know that there is money there for him in case something happens to his dad or me. And also that his two younger siblings, you know, won't have to worry as much about what to do 
um, if he needs things in the future. And also just the realization that if some of his supports are taken away, he lives in supported housing and he has a, a support person come once a week and he's got a case manager. It's, it's all wonderful. He's, he's got a great situation. We're very thankful. But with the funding cutbacks that are happening, that could end at any point. But now we know he has the money available that can help you know, keep his life productive and happy. So it's been huge. It's been good. <laughs> Well, and, and one other thing I want to mention, too, is that you live in the state of Maine, which does not currently have an ABLE program, right? Can you talk right. about that just a second? Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, I think when I learned about the accounts, I knew that they were 529 accounts, and we were familiar with those from the college funding experience. So I knew that you didn't have to set up an account in your own state, because I think our college fund was from Alaska or something. So I just started looking around to find a state that uh, was good. And yeah, but Maine still hasn't set up the account. So that's actually my goal for 20, late 2021 is to get involved legislatively and see if we can get something going. But yeah, but that's important to know. Uh, some states you have to be a resident in. I got Logan an account in Tennessee, which has been wonderful, great return, just really easy to use, but they um, are not allowing out-of-state residents to use it anymore, but they, you know, we, we can continue. So you have, to, you have to look, just do some research and go online. You can look at each state and see which one will be you know, good for you. Well, real quick, before we go to Hector, where online should they go though? Should they just Google uh, it? Now you can go to the ABLE you know, National Resource Center website, the ABLE NRC, and, and I did discover that fairly early on, and it was really helpful to have everything in one place instead of, you know, was, I tell people sometimes it's like a game of Super Mario Brothers where you're hopping along trying to find all the little treasures everywhere, but when I found that website, you know, they were all in one place, so it was very helpful. Great. Well, that's, thank you. It's, Teresa, for sharing that. And, and we're going to go ahead and, and move over to Hector to hear from Hector. The first question being, you know, what, what was your life like and what was your financial situation like before you opened your ABLE account? You alluded to it a little bit, but you have a powerful story. All of our, all of our panelists here today do, Hector. But can you share what your life was like, financial situation was like before? Well, yeah, before my ABLE account, um, you know, it's, it, I'm a person with a disability as well. Uh, and I've had social security and those sort of benefits, but I've also am somebody who's had uh, really well-paid jobs at times in my life. I've been very, very fortunate, but I think one of the things that has happened is because of my uh, psychiatric disability, sometimes I haven't been able to work that much and I've needed some of those benefits back. Um, and unfortunately, that kind of roller coaster of needing benefits and not being able to have them because you have other money or you don't have, you know, it, it just created a lot of problems. And for me, I ended up, and I, I live here in Los Angeles County, I ended up, I couldn't afford a place on my own. I ended up homeless, uh, you know, like many of the people here. And, uh, but I have a very strong family network. And for, I think, almost, gosh, it's almost 10 years. I slept on my mother's dining room floor. Uh, she has a one bedroom apartment, you know, and that's how my family kind of helped me. And I couldn't even save money because if I saved too much money to be able to get an apartment, I would lose my benefits, which would severely impact my, my thing. So, you know, like Sarah mentioned, it did felt like a punishment. Um, and I, I didn't have that, that, that safety net. So it actually contributed a lot to my mental health problems, distress, uh, feeling like a burden to my family when that wasn't the case, the loss of independence, not being able to take care of myself. And as a man, you know, I'm the oldest, it felt really weird, really uncomfortable. Um, you know, not that I'm not grateful that my family had to take care of me. And I know that caused additional stresses, you know, that I really wish they wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, and, you know, when ABLE account kind of came to California, because I was really eager, because I saw all the states doing it, um, I got it right away. I got it right away. I opened it right away. Um, and for me, my ABLE account has, I've used it not only as a wellness tool, but as, as a transformational tool uh, in my life, um, because I was able to, with my ABLE account, I was able uh, to, um, you know, open it up. And through donations that my friends and family did for my birthday, because I kind of did it it's people contribute. I said, you know, this is my birthday, you know, ship in what you want. And, you know, I'm hoping to maybe transform my life. And I just left it like that. Uh, and I got enough money to put a down payment for a house, which is uh, uh, where I'm at right now. And, and uh, so um, 
I got my able account like at the beginning of the year, um, two, two, two years, two, three years ago. And I, by March 15, I had enough money and I started looking for a house. It's a mobile home, but it's my home. Uh, it's, it's a two bedroom, two bathroom. So my mom has her own bedroom again and I have a whole bedroom with a door. Uh, and on Mother's Day, uh, you know, we got the keys and I gave it to my mom. Uh, and I think for me that, uh, that, that just helped me kind of reclaim a lot of what I had lost. Um, and part of what I had lost was kind of my sense of worth and independence because uh, I felt so weird as a person with a disability and the system but kind of penalizing you for trying to navigate as a person with a disability. So I think for me, it really allowed me to really kind of regain my life back because it's not my life back in good terms. And like during the pandemic, I have to tell you, I don't know how we would have fared um, had, I, had we not had this home. Um, you know, we had many people in our family who contracted it, uh, the virus, and we had a couple of people that passed like my brother. Um, but I was able, with my family, we were able to turn, kind of to turn our home like as a place to take care of our family members because it was hard for the hospitals. And this bedroom where I'm at right now is where I took care of in glasses of my brother. Uh, you know, and I think I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to do that. I wish he was here, but I know that we were able to kind of have that home space, my home space. And that's something that the ABLE account did for me. Um, it, it really not only changed my life, but it, it changed with the life of my family for the better. Um, and so that's, that's part of my able story. Uh, but so I'm just, I don't know, I never, I never imagined that something like this could, um, it helped me like that. I never, I never imagined that it could be used in this way or that it would have this outcomes because like Teresa and, and her son mentioned, it's that, that set that, that peace of mind that you regain. Um, it's something less to worry about. Uh, big things, yeah. Yeah, because it, it does. It affects the whole family. It can affect them negatively. It's interesting and powerful to hear how this is, this ABLE accounts affected you all positively and then supportive, especially, <clears throat> I think the entire country, the entire world has certainly gone through a recent, very challenging, on addition, in addition to other challenges people have already been living with prior to that. Uh, it, it's interesting, Hector, two years ago in May, we shared your story about being able to, it was amazing, it lined up perfectly. We were doing our highlight on you and you're like, hey, Mental Health Awareness Month, I've purchased this home and I'm not sleeping on the floor anymore. Um, anyway, that, that's a really, I, I think it's interesting you talked about how, you know, it's only a few miles from where you used to live where you're sleeping on the floor uh, that the sky looks different, you know, and then, it, and as you said, and you used the word transformational, you know, and empowering because each of you owns the ABLE account. This is in your own name. You have the power to control it. Um, can I, I'd, I'd like to go around and just check in with you to hear what the specific, how did you learn about ABLE and what prompted you, what specific thing in your life prompted you to be like, you know what, I got to open this account. So Sarah, you're back with us. I'll have you unmute. We lost you there for a second. I was yeah, little... I don't know the computer. And I don't, know. don't blame it on the computer. You bought that with Able funds. No, it's well, the internet. I blame the internet. There you go. It's Wi-Fi, <laughs> not the computer, because um, the computer's not that old. But Sarah, yeah. can you tell us a little bit about how you learned about Able accounts, and then also what prompted you? What in, what moment in your life you're like, you know what? I actually need to open this account. Um, it, I, it was in 2016. I was living in Virginia uh, at the time. And because I was receiving SSDI, because my father had retired, um, I, um, I was living in Virginia, but I didn't qualify for Medicaid there. So I, my mom and dad were still living in Michigan, and they're here in Michigan still. And my mom used to work at uh, Lenaway Community Mental Health Authority with um, as a nurse, and um, she ran into a woman she used to work with um, after she retired in 2016, and she knew our situation, and they were catching up, and um, the woman who still worked at the Mental Health Authority said, you should look into ABLE accounts for Sarah. This would be a perfect fit for her, and my mom did, and I opened it, like, probably, like, last week in December in 2016, and um, I, I'm just, I couldn't be more happy with how everything has gone since then. Well, and thank you for sharing. And I think that's 
you know, because it is just that one moment where you're like, you know what, I actually need to open one and also to have that support and hear about it from a trusted source, right? That's yes. not one of the reasons, honestly, why we're always saying we need account owners telling other eligible account owners and families. If we got to have them hearing from you directly because that's you, you've lived and walked in their shoes, they're walking in yours, but what's the opportunity they might be missing out on? Uh, so thank you for sharing that, Sarah. Now you've moved from Virginia and now you're in Michigan. Uh, yes. In your ABLE account, did you did you roll that or did you leave? No, it? no. Um, my parents opened my account in Michigan. And um, so there was uh, no problem. I mean, Virginia and Michigan were one of the first, first states that had the accounts. And so there, they had a partnership between them. So it was actually the perfect thing at that time because my parents wanted to give me money and not take away more of my benefits for my medical bills. So it, it was really just the perfect timing to that she ran into that person. Well, thank you. Rhonda, can, I, can I say that something about what Sarah just said is like, I like, I'm tired of getting socks for my birthday. Give me money for my able account. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they're like, these socks won't throw you off your benefits, Hector. Yep. Here's the, I wonder how many socks you have, how many sock drawers you have at this point. <laughs> I hope they're fancy socks. No, I'm just kidding. So Hector, let's go ahead and mix it up and I'll, I'll go to you next and then we'll go to Teresa and, and Logan to talk about, and you're on mute, by the way. Um, what, you know, what was the, how did you learn about the ABLE account? And what was the, the thing that prompted you? Like, you know what, I actually need to go ahead and open this up. Hey, thanks, sorry to interrupt, Teresa. I, I, just, oh. I just thought about that. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, I learned about it when the conversations were first starting, um, you know, across the, the federal government. Um, and I, I knew that this was an important tool that we needed for people with disabilities, uh, because uh, I want to let you in a little secret. Money is medicine. Uh, and it helps, uh, you know, it's not everything, but it's medicine. And I think for people with disabilities, that's something that oftentimes we haven't really had the privilege uh, to accrue or to participate, to develop like financial literacy. Uh, and I think part of it might've been questions that we couldn't do it ourselves or that I, it would be too complicated. And I think uh, I wanted to prove that point wrong. And that's kind of when I got started. Um, and California didn't get it until a little bit later. And I was so glad that it did. Um, and I jumped in it right away because I would hear all this uh, great examples from some other states, and I was really eager to try it. And when I opened my account, I didn't have those. I think I put like maybe like ten dollars to open it up, um, and I didn't know anything about how it was going to work. Uh, but I, I, I had that guided um, all that information on the able account, like the the planning guide, you know, about how to start it and following it. So that kind of gave me a roadmap, and I was just kind of so relieved because at first. Even though I had wanted it for so long and I've been learning about it, I was kind of like paralyzed with fear. It's like, I've never done this before. I'm going to do it yeah. wrong. And I had to kind of like allow myself the opportunity to learn, to make mistakes, and to enjoy this, this, this new thing. Um, and that's kind of what I went with it. I opened it up and I called, you know, in, I'm here in California. They had a, uh, a person that you could chat or call. And I, it's like, I asked all sorts of questions and uh, reassurances because I had lost a lot of this literacy information, financial literacy, because uh, I hadn't been able to really manage these options. Uh, so I learned a lot of new things, but I also kind of regained a lot of others. Uh, and it was it was kind of, it's, it's, even to this day, I learned. I compare, like I hear from Teresa's example, and I'm like, what? I, think, I want, because Teresa has mentioned some really good news about her, but kind of like, oh, I want that for my state. And so I, I'm constantly kind of learning because um, it helps me, but it also helps my community, you know, um, and it's a healing thing. Uh, and anything that we could do to take care of people with disabilities or for people with disabilities to be able to take care of themselves, that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm all about. It is what you're all about. <laughs> and actually, uh, we'll go ahead and, and thank you, Hector, for, for sharing that. Um, I know we're getting some questions about that too. We'll follow up on that in, in the chat. But, but first I wanna go to Teresa and, and Logan and we've got someone behind you in the window. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's my husband. <laughs> Oh, uh, so Teresa, Teresa and Logan would, would love to just ask both of you this, the same question, you know, how did you learn about Adol for the first time? And what was the deciding moment where you're like, you know what, we're going to go ahead and open this account? Right. Uh, it's kind of funny. I'm a, moder I'm a moderator on a website called College Confidential, which is all about helping kids get into college. And it's such an amazing community that even once your kids get into college, a lot of people stay on the website. And we have threads on everything from, you know, your favorite coffee to retirement. And, and there was a thread for parents of kids with disabilities. And uh, so when the people learned about our situation, one lady said, you guys need to look into ABLE accounts. And, and she explained it. And I had never heard anything. And this was fairly early on. So I'm like, wow, that would be great because I, uh, I'm Logan's representative payee. So I'm responsible for him financially. Uh, he's totally capable of doing it, but he asked me to, so I'm glad to. And as I saw his bank account balance go up, because he's, you know, he's on SSI, which it, it, and since his housing is subsidized, he doesn't have many expenses a month. So usually he has about 500 a month uh, of money that can be put somewhere. And I was getting really nervous, like, am I going to, you know, put cash in a drawer, I didn't know what to do. So that's really what prompted me. So his situation was a little different than Sarah and Hector's in that he didn't really have specific needs right now, but like he's thought about maybe buy, saving money for a car, you know, or like I say, if, if things change, just that security knowing it's there um, for, the, for the future was really what prompted me to do that. You know, and it's, and it's interesting hearing the variety, right? I mean, we're not just covering a wide variety of, you know, like demographically, uh, ge geographically, you know, we've got California, Michigan, and Maine represented here. And also each of you have a different story, a different reason that compelled you to think, you know, I actually need to open this able account. And also different trusted sources where you learned about this opportunity. Um, we have some, a question coming in here about um, folks wondering if the panel can talk about the process of what it was like setting up an ABLE account. Can you tell folks, you know, how was that process for you? Was it hard, easy? How did you do it? And I'll start back with Teresa and Logan, if, if the two of you could speak to that and then I'll go back around. And I just did an online search. I know I looked at the ABLE NRC website and Tennessee looked good. So I went online and it was a while ago, so I don't remember specifically, but I remember thinking how easy it was. It really wasn't an issue at all, getting it all set up. And now everything's online, so I can just go in and tap a couple of buttons and say, you know, put in $500 this month. And I get emails and it tells me our rate of return. His rate of return has been about 30% over the life of the account. It's just amazing. Um, you need to couch that as, hey, <laughs> it happens. And, you yeah, know, it's yeah. wonderful, but, you know. Yeah, you can't, you, can't, you can't count on that, but, um, and, you know, and then you can even, and it's up to you to, to, to decide what kind of funds you want to invest in, at least in Tennessee, and since he's so young, you know, I went with fairly risky uh, uh, funds because I figure he's got time for that roller coaster, um, but yeah, it was a very simple process, so I would not uh, think it should discourage anybody because it's, it's simple. So in terms of like kind of the FDIC insured savings account versus the investments, are you splitting that up? Or are you mostly in the investment side and kind of? I, the rest of the I side? think, it, I think it, you, have to, you have to look at you have to look at each state because I remember doing this for a friend recently, and some of the states are FDIC insured and some of them aren't. And Tennessee is, so um, yeah. But I, I don't and I don't know how. To be honest with you, you know, I mean, because he could lose money in the funds, and I'm not sure how all that works. Again, because since we're in it for the long term, I haven't really worried about it too much. Yeah. I'm not a financial expert. <laughs> right. And it, I mean, I think it's also something really important for folks to know, because sometimes people feel like, you know, all I've ever done is get benefits and I've had to stay within this $2,000 limit, or maybe I have a special needs trust, but someone else is managing that. It, it, that might be helpful, um, certainly, but um, it, it is more expensive and that's not owned by the individual themselves and directed by them. But in terms of um, just that, that growth, the fact that there also is the opportunity to lose the money because you're engaged in investing like anyone mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. There's the opportunity of having your money make money, which is mm -hmm. powerful, but there's also the potential for losing it. And you have to factor that in. 
And right. Oh, one other thing I was going to mention, I forgot when I was looking into this, it's a lot of states charge a fee each year. It's not too much. It can be like maybe $75. Tennessee doesn't. But that was when I was looking for my friend, I tried to find states for her that didn't charge a fee. So you might keep that in mind. Yeah. Well, well, let's go, let's go back over to Sarah and talk. Sarah, how was it for you, the process of opening your ABLE account, the documentation you had to have, the kinds of, how much time did it take? Was it hard to do? No, it was incredibly easy. I was really surprised because like my mom explained that we were going to be opening this account and I like immediately was like, oh, I can't handle this. I don't, I don't know if I can do this. And then I, she sent me um, the Michigan website to set up the ABLE account and it was done in like 30 minutes. It was so easy. And, and like, it, it just, even for me who has like no kind of financial savvy at that point, Mm -hmm. just like this it can't it's why isn't everyone who is eligible doing this is what it, was my thought I was like man I just want to tell everyone I know who could get one of these this is worth it I think you're telling about 207 people right now Sarah <laughs> well, good. we'll check out the archive of our discussion today so that, I hope so that's great it's nice to be able to offer you all this platform to to talk about this too and I think you know both you know, Teresa and Logan and Sarah, you're touching on something and, and Hector referenced it earlier, just the fact that like, you know, don't feel like you have to get a PhD in ABLE before you open it. I mean, it's a, it's not a huge bar to like put in 25, 50 bucks, get the thing rolling, get other people involved and learn as you go instead of the, and, you know, we hear from other of our ambassadors or account owners or family members who talk about gosh, I wish I hadn't felt like I had to figure every single thing out before opening this account. Or even, you know, like Teresa, you know, living in Maine, we've had a number of folks, we've had ambassadors who work with us who didn't realize until they started working with us, oh, I didn't have to wait until my state opened an ABLE program to open an account. And if I want to roll it over to my state or a different state that's open to out-of-state residents, I can do that. So... So thank you for, for sharing that, Sarah. And you've certainly gotten a whole lot more savvy as we've gone, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that, that's what happens, right? And and also your, I mean, I've just seen knowing you over the years, your confidence with it increase, you know? Oh, the confidence has definitely gone up. Just my, my self-worth, that feeling that like I am, can do something and like being an ambassador has been great. And, you know, I did that in 2018. So like, this is a program that gives to people. Well, and it's an opportunity that, I mean, it's, it's great to be here with our space. I have to say that the first thing I did when I came on board as director of the ABLE National Resource Center, they said, you're going to run this ambassador program. And I thought, now I'm hooked. Okay, I'm not going anywhere because these stories and these folks I get to work with is powerful. It keeps you engaged and it's constantly learning, you know, and Anyway, I, I want to thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. And Hector, I want to hear from you, you know, what was that process like for you? Um, but going through and actually opening the ABLE account, was that hard, easy? What what do you have to share with people about that? Uh, yeah, thank you, Miranda. Um, it was actually really fairly easy uh, to hear the one, my experience here in California, because I, I have, I, ha I did it online, so I have some computer literacy skills. Um, I did, for example, uh, stop a little bit uh, when thinking about some of the financial investment things. Uh, I, I, um, my family, my, uh, we really never done much of that. That, that kind of that we did, we've never really done investment to tell the truth. And so uh, it took some conversation and some kind of uh, just asking a lot of questions to the person on the other line, uh, just kind of relearning uh, a lot of the things. And then kind of just wondering if my disability was going to be covered because there was a question about qualified disability uh, diagnosis. And I was diagnosed when I was four with autism, so I had that. Um, but I also identify as a person, you know, with a psychiatric disability. And I realized that I, it, it did count as well. Uh, and so that documentation was very easy for me uh, to include. Um, it wasn't necessarily anything complicated or official uh, that they were asking for. Um, I think more than anything, I was a little bit kind of surprised at the end of how easy it was uh, that I kept wondering if this really, is this really real? As you know, is, is this for real? Uh, is it that easy? Um, because I thought it was a lot harder. And I think that's part of the fear sometimes that some 
communities of color might have about, you know, going into finance. Because let's face it, sometimes banks are just scary because we feel like they just owe, we owe them. But this was different. Like Sarah mentioned, it, it was like healthy. Uh, and now, uh, you know, when I get my monthly statements, uh, I save them for when I'm not feeling so good. So I save them and uh, okay, I'm doing some self-care with my able account here. It actually feels good uh, to know that uh, I, I work for I work for some goals, which is to save. Um, but is that kind of like peace of mind that that sometimes many of us perhaps haven't really been able to have during this whole pandemic? So it's kind of like medicine. Like I said, money is medicine. Able oh, yeah. kind is medicine. So yeah. You know, I just yeah, that's a that's a powerful statement, and and it's an opportunity that has been a long time coming. Being able to do that. Um, I know we've got, we only have a few more minutes. I have a few things at the very end, but I want to, before we go, I want to go around and just ask one last piece of advice or an action step you would encourage those folks who are listening. We've got a lot of people who are eligible themselves potentially, or who maybe are account owners or family members, service providers. We have a lot of folks who come to our webinars and listen and learn, uh, and we're glad that they're part of this discussion with us. Um, it, it is a discussion the entire community is having and needs to have, and it will continue to evolve. But what, you know, you all have been leaders in this space, you know, opening ABLE accounts early, figuring it out, working with us as ambassadors, which has been huge. What one piece of advice or action step would you encourage someone to take from your story today to move forward with? And I'll, I'll go back to Teresa and Logan and start with the two of you. Um, yeah, I guess a couple of things real quick. I, I would say just do it. Go on the ABLE NRC website and do a little research. Don't spend hours or anything. It's just not that complicated. So don't make it harder than it is. And then once hopefully you've set up an account and love it, get the word out. Because I have been shocked. My accountant didn't know about it. The psychiatrist didn't know about it. NAMI Maine didn't know about it. So get the word out there. You know, and ask ABLE NRC to put seminars on for you if, if that's something you can do. And just please get the word out because we just have to. It just it's really life changing. And uh, I have something to say also. It's that uh, if you pursue ABLE successfully and uh, acquire an account, it's it's a life changing benefit. It's one of those things, your mental health will improve, your physical health might improve, and uh, your health overall might improve as a result of accumulating an able account. An able account is a real blessing, and it's been a real blessing in my life. Um, Logan, Teresa, thank you. I, that's, thank you. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's go to Sarah and, and what, you know, you've been here, you have, you know, if you were to go back and talk to, if, a slightly younger version of yourself. What advice do you wish you had known that you're like, oh, here, here's what I need to do with ABLE? Um, I would definitely say, don't be afraid to try something like ABLE. You know, this is, it's don't be afraid. It's just, it's so easy. There's so many people you can reach out to. I've reached out to my local, my, my state's ABLE um, centers before, like my ABLE and, um, uh, you guys at ABLE NRC are just incredibly helpful. I learn something new every day and it's just, it's a great tool for independence and learning about not only finances and how to be smarter with your money, but also about yourself. Cause you learn through the process what it really matters to you, I think, and what, what you want out of life. It's, it's a really, for me, it was, it became like something to point myself in a direction when I felt like I had no direction. And I know my parents and my sister are so happy I have the ABLE account because they don't have to worry anymore about like what's gonna happen to me if something goes wrong. Exactly, Sarah, thank you. All right, Hector, why don't you bring us home with the last piece of advice and then I can go share some of those resources we've been talking about that I know Hector, you. You've had, you know, you probably have a lot of great advice to give folks, but what's one or two things that you could share with the audience? Thank you, Miranda. Um, you know, I think one of the things is don't worry if you don't have a lot of money. Don't worry about how you're going to add money to it. Um, and I think, you know, just start it off. It's, it's that you, you're not going to go climb up that mountain if you don't take that first step. Um, and it, it really, I think, you know, just start it off. Don't worry if you don't if you don't have a job or if you don't have 
you know, a lot of money. It's once you start it, it's like you can begin to to work on it. I think people have to give permission some, to do that. I think we have to do permissions as people of color sometimes. And I speak for myself, sorry. As black indigenous people of color, sometimes we don't think that we should be saving anything, uh, that we should, we should be using everything uh, right then and there for a community or for our families. And it's true. But we deserve also to save a little bit uh, as much as we can. I think that permission was one of the things. I, I felt guilty about saving money for my family at the beginning. Um, and now they, they give me money to save. Um, and I think <laughs> that was one of the things, um, you know, give yourself permission to do that. Uh, you, you deserve, you have a right uh, to transform your life in whatever way you can. Um, and you're not hurting anybody. Uh, so don't feel guilty about saving because, uh, you know, and just do it. Uh, and it, it just, it feels really, really, really good to be able to do that. Uh, so that, that's what I would share, Miranda. Well, thank you. Thank you all four of you. I think everyone who's here joining us today, thank you for joining us. So we have a couple of resources to share, but first, before I go to share those, I just want to say, you know, the ambassador program we have working with our account owners and families and, and all those that we meet and that we interact with, not just our ambassadors who are who they are, they're amazing. Um, but they're really the heart and soul of the work we do here at the Able National Resource Center. You know, the resources we develop, the presentations we give, we try to weave their stories in throughout and their voices, the lessons they're learning and teaching us and that we can share with all of you. And it's been really great doing this panel with all of you today. Thank you for being here. I do wanna show, just as we're wrapping up, I need to go back to sharing my screen with my PowerPoint. I think I'm sharing that right now because I just want to reference uh, a couple of the resources that we have uh, that are that we're trying to make these things more and more easy and, and bite-sized and manageable because we realize our website is very comprehensive. Um, but we have some new decision guides that can help move people forward and answer some questions. Am I able eligible? How do I open an account? How do I find the funds to save an enable account? How do I determine whether something's a qualified disability expense? How do my ABLE account savings interact with public benefits? And if I'm a working person with a disability, how can ABLE accounts support that work and not be problematic? How do they interact with those work incentives and other supports? Uh, we're gonna be developing more of these decision guides. They're kind of, I think of them like uh, choose your own adventure books back in the day where it's like, okay, here's the answer, the direction I wanna go. And they're interactive and they take you along and meet you where you're at and, and help you move forward in making your own decisions uh, and make sure that you have good, accurate information that's helpful. And our team of experts have helped develop that. Our ambassadors have helped inform that. And we're going to keep developing more of these. Um, we also have other resources, certainly our website. Um, we have information webinars on QDEs, ABLE tax benefits. We've got ABLE accounts, special needs, and pooled trust comparison charts. Sign up for our newsletter, our bi-monthly newsletter. And finally, you know, we do have a service provider toolkit and an employer toolkit that can be shared with employers uh, who have employees who have a disability or family members who have a disability. For service providers, this has great information, including some PowerPoints you can use to share information. We're trying to make this easy for all of you here today to, to move forward with this and share this with others, which I think takes us to, oh, before we get to that, we also have a uh, the Financial Resilience Center, which is a sister center at the National Disability that started last May um, and was open to share resources for people with disabilities and chronic health conditions um, that were impacted by COVID. And ABLE National Resource Center and the Financial Resilience Center work closely together. And you'll see some resources across ways. But I want to make sure folks know about that because we continue to see the impacts on that. I know Hector, you referenced and spoke powerfully to this. We've all been impacted by this at some level. So there's some great resources here too. We want to make sure folks know about that. And finally, please help us spread the word. Check out our resources, share them widely. Uh, reach out to us, that sign up for our newsletter, connect with us on Facebook and Twitter, check out our webinars. We'll hopefully do more of these panels. Um, and you can check out our website and our frequently asked questions. We just have some good resources that those folks who are here today and our other ambassadors have, have been a significant part of helping us develop. They've informed our work. They drive our passion in this. And we can't thank them enough as well as all of you. Thank you for those who've joined us, for joining us. And, and thank you to 
our panelists today here. We really appreciate you, you being here and hope everyone has a great rest of your day and rest of your week and Mental Health Awareness Month and the power of AVIL accounts in, in helping to increase well-being across the board, financially, mental, emotional health. So think with that, I'll wrap up and, and, and we can go ahead and end our webinar, our panel. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>